This segment of the CU Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. They're the leaders in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision, engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. That's how the people at Manscaped have perfected the Lawnmower 3.0. It's the best trimmer. Look at this thing. Look at those offers. You got the guard. You got the LED light to guide you on your path down there. A ceramic blade to keep you from getting snagged. Yeah. You definitely don't want to snag or clip it's anything down there. It's the advanced skin safe technology. Water resistant. Oh, they offer lots of stuff, Manscaped. Body wash, deodorant, uh, the ball toner. The ball toner. It gives you a little pep in your step, a little spritz. You know, it gets that pH balance. A little, little afternoon revival. If you're worried about stanky balls, though, they got the ball deodorant. I'm not, not going to judge if you do. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go down there and give it a whiff. <laughs> but hey, that's why it's all private. There's a special offer right now, Ian, for everyone out there. You get 20% off of free shipping using code CU Podcast at Manscaped.com. Again, 20% off free shipping with code CU Podcast at Manscaped.com. That's a pretty good deal, right? Yeah, get out there and clean up your act. Your balls are going to thank you. All right, uh, Ian, we have a. We have a, a retro gaming topic. Uh, thank God, because this week has been sort of paltry on this stuff. Uh, this happened. Uh, Josh, who runs SideQuest Games, um, who we've dealt with in the past. He's always at Portland. Nice fellow. Nice guy. He's, he's big into the, the water-graded games. He was quoted in the article. I think the Kotaka one back in the fall or early in this year about it. One of those articles. And he helped me get the, the matching Mario behind me for the Luigi uh, there. Um... He just completed a trade in the past couple days for the, a Nintendo. He traded a sealed Pokemon Red 9.8 sealed. Uh, he told me it was like uh, probably the high, highest known you know, grade of that. The highest known grade. Uh, for the Pokemon Red. Traded that straight up for a Nintendo World Championship grade card. That was WADA graded 5.0 uh, that he got. He posted it on Facebook. Uh, it was also on Twitter. And um, this is a... Uh, we can go in a lot of directions here. Um, I'm shocked that I saw a trade like this happen. Um, just because you really see the new co speculators, collectors versus the traditional ones sort of... Uh, not butting heads, but meeting right here, right? Sure. Josh has been a guy who's been around. He obviously owns a store and runs it. Successful store. But now he's obviously getting into the, to the, the water greatest stuff, but those are people that are now coming from outside video games and getting into this. I cannot wrap my head around wanting, even if it's a sealed, a Pokemon Red game and giving up a Nintendo World Championships cart for that. Um, we're talking about a game that has historical and cultural significance of video games that they only made a few hundred of at most, like 350, and that we, less than 100 are known to exist. And that everyone is going to be after this game. It was always a game people were always after for million collecting. That that's not going away. And to trade that straight up is just I don't know the mentality behind that. Ian, I don't know. I, it's it's just weird. Um, an NWC in, in this market would go for if this if he put this on 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 Heritage. I can't picture going for less than seventy five eighty thousand. I just can't at this sure. point in time. Um, Maybe a hundred. <clears throat> Yeah, I see that as well. Um, it, it's, it, but I think that that's where people need to be careful too. You cannot assign a value to a monetary value easily to something like the Pokemon Red. Based uh, upon the trade, you mean? Based upon the yeah. trade. Um, and I mean, I'm sure he knows that as well. He works in a business. Once you get into trade, monetary value is, is it, it, you can't, you can't. You it doesn't mean the Pokemon Reds were worth the same. Right. It means that you found someone who really wanted that sealed Pokemon Red. They maybe have plans for it in the future. Maybe they think it's going to go up. But I don't think if you had put both of these on the market and had them both sell on the same day, you would find them selling for the same price. Oh, absolutely. absolutely not. No. Um, so I think it. I, I think that's one thing that people need to be careful of here is that this does not make a sealed Pokemon Red worth the same monetary amount that the last known... Um, 
NWC sold NWC for. gold yeah. sold for or gray sold for. It means that it's worth in trade an NWC gray to someone who really wants that Pokemon red. Yeah, we saw that with the was it the Tom Brady card that got traded? Right, exactly. For one, we're like, doesn't mean the Brady's worth a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's insane. Or doesn't mean the NWC is worth that. Like, you can't put it to that. There's a lot of weird stuff that can be going on here. But this is a real trade that happened, uh, for sure. Um, and then um, he passed on. It's funny because he said I had a chance to get this a few times in the past, like five times in the past, and I finally got one. Uh, here, so I was like, I said, you made out, you won this trade. Yeah, no, he. I mean, you, I have, mean, you, you won this. There's absolutely no denying the fact that he uh, got the better end of this bargain. And I don't. It's not that I don't think a sealed Pokemon Red in or, or a Pokemon Red in good condition couldn't be worth something. It is also a game with historical significance. Pokemon is is wildly popular, but I just. We don't know how many are out there. It's not nearly as old. That's the other thing that I, I didn't say when I was talking to you yesterday is we've seen examples in the past of, you know, with like Tim Atwood of people being like, surprise, I've got shipping cases of stadium events. You all thought that and this that's was, late 80s. And that, yeah, and that's late 80s. I mean, this was a game that was released in the US in 98. I think it was. I think 98 was was when Pokemon Red came here. So we're talking a little over 20 years. Yeah. And anyway, I think it was technically released in 96 in Japan. So he said, um, Josh told me he had f uh, fielded offers in the 20 to 35 range before uh, for it. So I'm like, okay, 20 to 35, we'll just say around 25,000. Or maybe he could have got the cash for that. So some of these deals drop, who knows. Um, so you could have, though, kept your, if you could have gave him the cash, though, and, and, and still made out buying a separate one like or keeping yours without trading like i i, I scratch well, my head when it comes the to benefit trades. obviously the benefit is no cash needs to leave hands but like i said it does yes. it does it does start to muddy what things are worth because yeah it's not going to be that same value to everyone else but okay so if you look on pokemon red sealed on ebay right now um sealed one for three thousand dollars which i mean obviously it's probably not a 9.8 but it doesn't look horrible to me here's one that looks horrible a beat up for 2500 here's another one for three um here's a sealed one with a player's guide um is it the player's guide sealed in did it come with the player's guide some of these oh yeah that's, oh that's a cool one it, it came with one um no it, it's a it's one case with the, with the sealed one and the yeah it looks like its own skew player's oh, guide the, with the with the it's like bubble a big, it's a big yeah, clamshell yeah okay so that's that's being bid on right now it's at 6300 dollars with two days left that might go for a lot given this Sure. news or whatever but that was still going to be bid on no matter what um there's one for there's a 90 plus oh that's no, fire red sorry um here's one an 85 plus uh vga gold i don't know what that is is that a 9.0 i forget what sean from reserves investment says about what they are it's it's at least an eight and a half though it's around a nine for that so that's on here 12.5 k or best offer and there's a few others so here's the point this is a 9.8 that it survived as a 9.8 somehow could have been pulled from a shipping case but there's, this is a game readily available even sealed they made millions of these yes so you're trading a game I don't care the seal this is the thing about the overvaluing the sealed stuff you're trading a game where they made millions of them and you can find a sealed one anytime you want for a game again that there's less than 100 known to exist I just it just it just blows my mind. So this 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 dealer or speculator must think that yeah, this is going to be a game worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in the future. To me, I mean, I don't know how else you can justify that. Yeah, trade. that's the only thing I can think, and I I, I don't see where that uh, idea would come from, especially because without mentioning names, we've already seen some people be like, we don't know where the sealed market is going. Yes, even people that might have been a little uh, bullish on it, a little bullish. Might be be like you know what now we're like um, we're almost two years into this now right we're almost not only two years in eh, maybe we don't know where some of this stuff goes we, we see what's happening with the Atari stuff already hitting the dirt within a few months and people losing thousands of dollars on bad bad investments there's no re reason this won't happen with NES games there's no reason at all yeah. well even though NES games are hard to find sealed by and large than Atari games uh, obviously uh, the only one on Heritage auctions that went. Uh, for a Pokemon Red, there was only one example that I saw of uh, you past sold examples. Oh no, there was a bunch. Uh, I got a sign. I got a sign into. Nah, I got a sign in to see. Give me a second here. Got a sign into Facebook. Don't steal my identity. Heritage auctions. Okay, so 
All right, so one went an 8.0, A plus went for 4,400 in July. There with the buyer's premium. Um, is that the only sealed one I see? That's the only sealed one. So there's only been one sealed red one. That's went for 4,400. So this is a this is a trading premium, if you want to call it, tens of thousands of dollars more uh, to get that highest grade one. So that's what you're banking. You're banking that, okay, even if the seal stuff doesn't... Yeah, you're banking that the seal is what's going to matter at the end of the yes. day. And what, the I, game so what I've always argued to, to these people's faces, no lie, argued nicely, but argued multiple times is that if you're banking on just the seal alone, this is why this is different than other hobbies and you cannot compare it to comic books. Because all those golden and silver age comic books don't have seals. Right. You're just grading the actual item. And like we've said, for the majority of people, uh, a non-sealed, nice condition one, if you want it in a fine. case, if you want it graded, if you want it, that's fine. It's You're fine. really banking that there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to continue to care about the seals and are going to continue to trade them back. And, well, I mean, at the end of the day, what I, I, I see happening is people passing the same $100,000 around. Like, yes. And, and, in a circle. And it happens with the comics, too. Yeah. They have so the comics with the dealers or start to buy from each other in order to pop up. you got to find the next the next uh, person on, on the pyramid to pass it on to. So it comes back to the age-old question. Will there be enough people to see the same item, the same Legend of Zelda sitting next to a second one, and willing to put a 10,000% premium, by and large, on the cellophane? That's what the premium is on. The cellophane. That's it. Right. It's not, even, it's not even just the condition, it's the cellophane on top of that. And this is what we're seeing here. We're seeing, we're seeing, I don't know if this means the bubble's going to pop soon or next year. I, I, th I think, I think people are going to wise up to this more sooner than later though. I really think, I don't think it's going to last a decade. I don't think it's going to last five years. No, I don't, I could be wrong, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, there's, there's just too much money at play here and not enough, I think, extra new money to get into it yes precisely does that make sense there's not enough yeah. new money to, to dive in behind it yes i don't i don't i don't think it's going to do a good job of bringing more people in that are going to be interested in the sealed stuff you don't you don't have like like a lot of the silver age stuff went up the past 10 years because of obviously the movies like the marvel the marvel movies the mm -hmm. dc movies you don't have that with these esoteric titles you don't have like you know, the Star Voyager movie to come out to justify the $7,000 Star Voyager. Like, you don't, right. you, you don't have that. These are lost entertainment titles. These are, these are titles that... Eventually, we're going to see the same thing happen that happened with regular Nintendo carts. Eventually, people are going to stop caring about the esoteric stuff and the weird stuff, and they're going to only care about the popular stuff. And I think stuff like a sealed Super Mario Brothers will probably be able to maintain and hold its value. And but I don't to some, to some degree to sure. some degree, but I don't yeah. think it's ever going to. Um, but yeah, like like you said, the Star Voyagers and the sealed other stuff. At some point, people are going to stop caring or realizing that hey, I, I, I'm investing in this right now thinking that there'll be a buyer to come along, but who? what buyer is going to come along to want this? Right. So for Pokemon Red, yeah, there's always going to be someone that wants Pokemon Red probably, right? There's always going to be someone yeah. who wants a Pokemon. There's always going to be someone who wants the Super Mario Brothers. But that's kind of what's always interested me, and I, I, I don't think I've ever actually articulated this, um, but has been weird about the sudden boom in sealed NES game collecting and also with some of the Atari stuff is this is happening well after its initial popular collecting period is over. It's like they're trying to restoke the fire on something that has already died and passed. Because sure. in general, NES collecting is on a huge down downturn, yeah. you know, but they're trying to get the sealed stuff going back up. The Atari stuff we've seen already with like the Spider-Mans, initially you get some high price ones, but even as of last week, a Spider-Man sold for yeah. like 800 bucks. Yeah, it was not, it was a, a, a 9.6 uh, uh, sealed one. Uh, I think it went for like nine hundred, and last month a nine point six went for like three to four thousand. And then like earlier in the year, one went for like no, the nine point eight went for like nine thousand. And now yeah. it, so it, we're, it we're already we, we did a, we did a fob topic how it already had fallen. Yeah. More and now than and now we're seeing it fall even more. This is not yeah. it, this is not sustainable. And 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 yeah, no, it's absolutely not sustainable to be to happen this quickly. Um, and yes, we will be proven right on this. I, I mean, I, I I just don't yeah. Yeah, it's 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 nutty, and what's funny what's funny is that the the we obviously talk about the store, uh, the pandemic has helped the cart prices to edge back up on some of those NES titles. 
but it's still gonna take a hit afterwards, though. Yes, but, that, but that's separate than this. That's separate than the, than the sealed people, anyway. Sure, it's totally separate. So I don't know. To close it off, I, I think Josh obviously uh, got the better end of that bargain, and uh, I mean, kudos to him. Uh, I just I don't know what the person who took that Pokemon Red is is thinking is going to happen with it in the future. Sure. So uh, yeah. Again, check out side quest games if you're up in the northwest you get they got a, they got a store out there i've always enjoyed my interactions with them at portland there's always guys a pretty nice setup at portland yeah he does 